We've spoken loads on the channel about how we can start reducing the amount of meat that we eat. But in the UK, for most people, meat is still a really important part of their diets. So for a more sustainable dinner, eating less meat has to come hand in hand with buying better meat when we do have it. And when we say better, we mean better for you, better for the environment and better for the people who bought the meat to your plate. Making these meaty choices can be a little bit of a daunting task, so we have teamed up with Eating Better, who are an organisation that are working towards creating sustainable, healthier diets. They've just released an amazing report on why we should be making more sustainable choices. Please go and check it out. And we're going to be looking at the different labels and certifications on food, so what things like organic, freedom food, red tractor and pasture for life mean. So when you're in the supermarket, what should you be looking out for? We have just been to the supermarket and we bought loads of different kinds of meat, dairy and eggs and we're just going to have a look through, see what certifications are on there and find out a little bit more about what they all mean. First up, chicken fillets and the certification that it has on it says assured food standards and it has a red tractor on it. So what does the red tractor mean if you see it on the food? The red tractor just simply means that it offers traceability mm -hmm. and also it meets minimum legal UK standards. It doesn't offer anything really in terms of higher animal welfare standards or higher environmental standards. So this is just your minimum legal requirement? It's bog standard. Okay. Up next we have bought a couple of different kinds of sausages. The first one is these 12 thick pork sausages. It's an Irish recipe, it has trees on it. Other than that there's no certification or anything. It certainly looks like it's come from a nice farm. <laughs> I mean, we can't see anything. I mean, this hasn't got red tractor on it even. And this, I think, is probably, like one of the things to look out for is that sometimes um, supermarkets or brands will design their marketing so it looks like it's from a farm or it looks like it's from like a nice space, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the stuff has come from a proper outdoor rear farm. What we should be looking out for, we have some organic minced beef. <laughs> so why is organic the one to look out for? So if you don't know um, the individual circumstances of the farm where you're getting your meat from, organic's the one to look out for in supermarkets and other shops. There's a few reasons for that. Um, the animals have more space, they're able to show more natural behaviour, there's restrictions on antibiotic use, um, and it's better for the environment mm -hmm. among, amongst lots of other things. I mean, no label's perfect, but organic's the one that gets closest to everything we'd be looking for. We bought a ready meal, we bought a chicken tikka masala. So am I right in thinking that there are different rules about what you can say about fresh meat and what you can say about prepared meat? Actually, we did some research recently on ready meals and only three supermarkets included ingredient meats, such as the meat in ready meals, in their um, farm animal welfare policies. So does that just mean that the stuff that they're putting into their ready meals won't be of as high a standard as the rest of their fresh meat. Well, it would certainly make me think that if they're not including it in the policy, mm -hmm. you've got to ask the question why. Eggs is one that I'm always really confused about knowing which are the best kinds of eggs to buy. So we bought some eggs and they're also free range and they're RSPCA assured. Um, so what does it mean if it's a free range egg? Um, so it means that the animals, the hens that have laid these eggs have had time to, um, to, to to be in the outdoors, quite simply. Quite a broad church that covers lots of different meanings. Mm -hmm. But the, the good thing actually on this packet is that some it, this is also RSPCA assured, so we're getting the assurance around the higher animal welfare. If I was gonna go to buy some eggs, either this or organic would probably be the best one. Yeah, organic is the is the one to go for, but this this is good as well. We also got some milk, which is organic, which we know is a good one to look out for. But yep. also I saw there's another thing on here that says Soil Association Organic, as well as having the other organic label. So I was wondering what that one was. Well, so the green label with the leaf on is that it's, it meets the EU organic standards. The mm -hmm. Soil Association is the UK one, and in some areas it goes slightly above the minimum requirements of mm -hmm. EU law. It can indicate things like um, the, the fact that the animals are fed um, local, natural and 100% organic food. Which reduces the environmental footprint because they're not eating... You're on the right line. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so it's a bit closer, they're not eating things that take ages to get to them. And... Absolutely, right, okay. yeah. So Soil Association is a good one to go for. You, you can also look out for um, the label for free range dairy as well. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us about this. If people want to find out a little bit more about eating better, where can they go? I think it's to our website or they can follow us on Twitter or Facebook. And I'll put all the links in the thing.
Agriculture has a big impact on the environment and sometimes not in the ways that you might expect. It's the principal source of ammonia from animal waste and ammonia can cause bad air quality as well as acidification of groundwater and soil. 97% of the world's soy, which is a bean and an amazing source of protein, is used to feed livestock, which is a major cause of deforestation. And in the EU, almost three quarters of antibiotics are given to animals, which is leading to a very real and growing threat of antibiotic resistance. The good news is there are ways to minimise the impact of the meat and dairy that you do buy, but with so many different schemes and certifications, short of knowing the farmer or buying directly from the producer, it can be super difficult to know what you're actually buying. We are here today on Rom Shed Farm with Fidelity. We are in the middle of Kent and um, we're organic and we're certified pasture for life with mm -hmm. the Pasture Fed Livestock Association. And what that means is that all of our beef and sheep is 100% grass fed. Most of the beef industry is underpinned by the use of cereals. Maybe not so much the sheep industry, but definitely is in the beef industry. The, the more difficult thing is that most of them are, can also be called grass fed because you can use the term grass fed when it just means 51% grass fed. <laughs> so that's why the certification mark is so important. The Pasture for Life certification mark proves that it's 100% mm -hmm. grass fed. What does being an organic farm mean? So it means basically farming naturally, so you can't use artificial fertilisers, mm -hmm. you can't use any chemicals, so no sprays to get rid of weeds or to get rid of insects and animals you might think you don't want. And most important of all, it means very high welfare, There's very strict welfare standards. So if we're trying to buy meat that is sustainable but also high welfare, what are the yeah. best things that we can do as consumers? Well, given that most of us probably do our shopping in the supermarket, mm -hmm. you're relying entirely on labels, we need to look for certification marks that really guarantee it's been independently verified mm -hmm. that the production methods are producing high welfare or environmentally friendly products. So organic is one of them, and the Soil Association is an example of one of the organic certification bodies. Pasture for Life is the other one that will guarantee that your beef and lamb or dairy products are 100% grass fed. Mm -hmm. I think probably free range is a reasonable one to go for. You there will be standards around that which are worth considering. And on pigs, I think you should look carefully at the label because there is a huge difference between industrial produced pigs and if they say they're outdoor reared or you can work out from the label that they've spent some of their lives outside, then that must be better than buying pork from animals that says nothing about where they're reared at all because you can bet your bottom dollar it's not great conditions for them. If they're not them. telling you then you should be a little yeah. bit suspicious. Yes, exactly. So if we take, say, say we take the pig industry, mm -hmm. um, there's an organisation called Farms Not Factories and they have shown that if you buy a high welfare sausage, for every two sausages that you might buy in an industrial produced pig, you buy just one and a half if you're buying a high welfare sausage. So you're, so not, you're losing this much sausage. Yes, <laughs> you're losing half a sausage on your plate. So instead of eating two from a pig that's been kept indoors in pretty terrible conditions, you're eating one and a half from a pig who's probably been reared outside in perfectly reasonable conditions. Well I've read somewhere recently that that is what most people do is they eat meat twice a day. Mm -hmm. But if you think of what that meat might be, so they perhaps have a sandwich at lunch which maybe got ham in it and then most people eat chicken several times a week mm -hmm. at night. Um, in, the, in the evenings they go home to some sort of chicken based meal and really the chicken industry, the industrial chicken industry is I think just the chickens are squashed together in a huge shed. They live for about 40, 42 days. Mm -hmm. It's underpinned by a huge amount of medication. Um, it's not really a very good industry to be supporting. Much better to support someone who's producing an outdoor reared chicken. Mm -hmm. I think we should be eating meat maybe once or twice a week. I think that's plenty of meat for us all to be eating. Of course, if you can buy directly from the producer, it's a win-win situation because you can talk to them properly about how they rear their animals mm -hmm. and then you, you know the answers to all your questions. So maybe going to your local butcher shops, to your farmer's markets, or even getting in box schemes, mm -hmm. you can start asking them the direct questions. Actually, you should ask those questions in the supermarket. <laughs> you should go and ask them what they mean by these labels and start kicking up a bit of a fuss if it's not answering, because they won't change until they have to change. Um, we need the consumers to lead a revolution in helping people to understand exactly what's in the food they're buying. It sounds really obvious, but another good thing to look out for is where your meat comes from. Obviously, if it comes from somewhere further afield, then it's had to go through a lot of transport and refrigeration. So buying local is often better and can mean it's fresher as well. There isn't a certification that encompasses every aspect of buying better meat, but organic is definitely the one that comes closest. So it's one to look out for in the supermarkets if you're not sure what to buy. 
I would love to know what you guys think about this, whether you think that there should be more information on packets, if the labels should be clearer. And if you have any questions about the kind of meat that you're buying in supermarkets, then please leave us a message in the comments and we'll get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.